Let's on, on AI. I mean, you said you're a big fan of AI. I mean, it can become better than a, than a chemist. Sounds plausible. So why, why are you not investing more in, in AI besides like, the deal you did with Accenture? So we are one of the largest shareholders of a company called Accenture, yeah. uh, which is a very cool AI, AI platform. We have three agreements that are not all disclosed with AI platforms to test on Evotex platform what they're really worth. Yeah. Can you give a hint? No. <laughs> um, and we are the largest internal investor okay. in building also AI on Evotex platform. Yeah. Because I think here, and it's all transparent to all our partners, by the way. Yeah. Why is this important? Because the learning curve yeah, of every platform can only happen if you're not sitting only in a shiny office, but when you really do an experiment on the platform. Yeah? And biologists and chemists are the key to the experiment. It's not only to have an algorithm that is predicting something. You need to do the work, and then you have to feed back the work again. Yeah? Otherwise, the platform will never get smarter. That's the yeah. first thing. Learning curve. Yeah? Learning curves. Learning curves only happen if you feed the data back into the system, and a predicted target that is feeding back into the system is not making the system better. It has to be a real experiment. Yeah, so that's why real experiments are absolutely critical on, on, on these platforms. That's the first thing. The second thing is everything that we see in, in uh, AI today only makes sense, to me at least, if it really helps drug discovery to be more efficient. Yeah? So that's why what we are doing, we are really very... So we have 700 chemists working for Evotech, the best in the world. But what we are telling all of them, yeah, your job in the next five years will transform because you will go hand in hand with an algorithm and do your chemistry. That's why you better start now to do this. Will the AI not replace some of them? No, yeah, because there are 3,300 diseases out there that are unsolved. Yeah. That's why maybe you will need for a lead-op campaign, yeah, not 18 months anymore and 15 chemists. Yeah. You should need only three months or nine months yeah, and half the number of chemists, but you can do more experiments. That's the first thing. And the second thing, you just do more targets that you evaluate than ever before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the replacement should not be put into the room because that's creating angst in a world where what is really needed is first energy to do something, and not first a big barrier of, ooh, my job will be gone, because then these people will never make an experiment. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, yeah, I, I think agree. And so you, on, on AI, so you, you really see it as a business opportunity for, uh, let's say, let's scale up at the, at the business level. You see it as an opportunity for Evotech to grow? or to take shares, market shares on competitors? And if so, how, how much? We are doing it, so that's how we look at it. Yeah? <laughs> and, and that's, I think, the, the proof uh, of that. And I think then it's the invitation to all our partners to do something together and to do more of that together. Mm. Because, again, we are all not there that we can say, here is a predicted target really going into a proof-of-concept phase two trial. Once we have done this, yeah, then we can say, okay, the full learning curve is there and the full blueprint is there. Yeah? We are at the beginning of this, mm -hmm. but what we are as a, as a company really trying to do with many of our pharma partners, by the way, Bayer, Celgene, others, yeah, Sanofi, Merck, yeah, uh, the list is too long. It doesn't does matter, yeah, is to create here a learning curve of how to make things faster and better. And, and once this blueprint is there, the job profiles and the timelines will change. No one can accept the efficiency outputs that we have today in the industry, because cost pressure will come. I mean, that's just a given. It's already here. It's, I mean, cost pressure is, is county. Yeah. Or, yeah. And, uh, OK, cool. And, and moving to the, to the value of death, I mean, it's something that has been around for, for, for ages and forever and will still be there forever. But at the same time, like, you've never had that much capital as today. So 
Is it really that tough to cross the value of death? No, I yeah. think that there are two things, three things. The first is that we have to come to a new understanding of public investments and private investments. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because many public institutions now think that the best thing that they, they, they can do is to make mini pharma companies out of academia. Yeah? I would strongly advise against this. <laughs> yeah? Because then the learning curve is all of a sudden that you say, this brilliant university also has now all of a sudden a screening technology there. They have their own platform. That's exactly where we should not go. Yeah? But there is a lot of money in the public system supporting academia, and I'm pro. Yeah? And even more money should go there, yeah? because it's a very good investment for our society. But what it does, it creates, at least in Europe, a bit of a hurdle to really spin out ideas, because it feels so comfortable yeah, to do it here, make a publication, and be famous. Yeah? The, second, the second thing is we have to get to clarity what reproducibility of academic data really is all about. Yeah? Because as in a famous paper published in Nature, and, and the, the evaluation was done by Bayer, by the way, um, it turned out that more than 60% of all the data that comes out from academia and that is published is not fully reproducible. What does you, you see it at Evotech as when, you, when you're reproducing it. Our data likely. is reproducible, but yes. Is it 60%? 65 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I think the point I want to make is we just have to be here in a different synchronization yeah, by saying making here a stop loss very fast by data that is not reproducible should make money more efficiently available. Because what you don't want to have, you don't want to have a VC company investing into something that comes out of academia. You, yeah, first of all, only getting an MTA, reproducing all the data, and then finding out that it doesn't work. That's bad for both sides. That's bad for academia, it's bad for VCs, and what then happens is that people don't make the cycle a second and a third time. We have to break through the cycle and say, okay, data is more reliable than just published the old way. Mm. And the third thing is, I think the risk capital environment, as we see it, we should really start and, and, and help venture capitalists uh, to create exits in different ways. Because it's very hard. Yeah? If you have a limited number of companies, when you have relatively small funds, and where you have to be brutal in your financing rounds to create this 5x return. Yeah? And, and that's just a, a, hard, a too hard game. Yeah? that everyone is playing here in the VC industry with the companies. Yeah? But that's how their mantra is, and that's why we have, at this stage, not this fluid world as we see it on NASDAQ, mm. if you look at Europe, because the system is broken. There's not enough VC money going out to public investors. That's what you have as an understanding, yeah? much, much more broadly on NASDAQ, and that's why I think Europe is here lagging behind, and that's just unacceptable because, as you say, there is more money in Europe, yeah, but it's just not put to work. Yeah. We have you. Excuse me? We have you. I would love to put more money to work, and we I will mean, try... I will take it, you know. If yeah, we try. To but we are one, one fish in the pond, yeah, mm -hmm. so there, there should be hundreds of fishes. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then, switching to the antimicrobial, I mean, the data you presented, I mean, the, the data on the, on the medical need is pretty obvious and now widely recognized. But on the other hand, when you look at the economics, it seems still pretty broken. And most of the farmers are moving, moving away, I mean, are not, not investing as much as they should do or as much as they, they could. And so, I mean, it seems like you are investing when all the other farmers are not investing in antimercurial. So why, why are you the only one to do a bet, like a financial bet on it? Because there is a transformation ongoing which says that the pharma industry as we know it in the last 50 years will not be the pharma industry in the next 50 years. Yeah? The impact of Bill Gates on tuberculosis is bigger than of any other pharma company ever before. So one person can change a full disease. Yes, he's very rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but it just tells you if you target a disease area and if you have a new alignment with a foundation, for example, that says that's our target, yeah? and it's not a return on investment driven target only, but it's really a medical global health problem, you can all of a sudden reframe a certain disease. And infectious diseases, there are about 300 infectious diseases where it is global health problems, where we will never have a public market the way we have it in oncology or in diabetes or whatever. So these are the 300 diseases where we need a new deal between governments, yeah, globally, foundations, and these disease owners. Yeah? That's one part, sorry. Then you have a second part where I'm not sure if pricing is really fair if it comes to a an, an novel antibiotic, I, I stress novel, yeah? because if it's really a novel antibiotic and it helps, then it should be priced in a fair way and not only like any generic is out there. Yeah? That's something where politic has to change and then markets will come back and pharma will come back into that. That's a long-term bet that we are as Evotech making, but there I'm, I'm, I'm really why, convinced. Why are you making it already now? Because I have no time to lose. So why should I wait, or what should I wait for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and the third thing is in infectious diseases, don't forget that there is a huge market out there for many viral infections where the, the risk-reward benefit is fantastic. Yeah? I mean, if you have a new efficient hepatitis C drug, ask Gilead how it feels like. Good, them good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll open up for, for questions on the, on the trends. Do you have, don't, don't be shy, we are. Yeah. Okay. Go on, Victoria. Go on. Did you all hear the question in the back? So between pace and innovation and standard of care, and how do you navigate through that? So again, I have to apologize. I, for most of the questions, I don't have good answers. But uh, <laughs> what is always striking to me, if you have been ever in a hospital, yeah, and I've been there many times, unfortunately, what is the most annoying thing is the inefficiency of the complete process. Yeah? So you have three hours waiting time, then you have 14 days diagnostic gap, and you don't know what, what your disease is. Then you have zero treatment time in a world where it is 7,000 euros per bed per, per day where nothing is happening to the patient. And then our industry is the one that is suffering because our 6% of the total healthcare cost of a patient yeah, with a disease, that's the cost of the drug, yeah, is then the thing where everyone says that's too expensive. Yeah? So as little McKinsey analysts do this, yeah, they say there is some waste in the system. Yeah? <laughs> Cutting out that waste of the system yeah, and coming to a holistic view of what is happening to a patient is absolutely key. Yeah? And that's why also here it's not only coming together as one industry in certain disease areas and change that, it is the whole process because it's absolutely unacceptable. If you look at the total cost burden, yeah, that's ruining the system. Yeah? We, it's not only, yes, we are part of it, yeah? I don't want to ignore that, but it is the total system yeah, that is not financeable, it's not just a little pill that we're taking. And 94% of this system have also to do their homework. And that's not happening as radical as it should be. That's where digital and AI will help a lot on the 94% as well. So. Every step yeah, where you can take out cost ultimately makes the system yeah, more sustainable. 
because that the system is not financed in the long run, I think here we all agree on, on this anyways. Go for it, Mike. Wait, Mark, your, your yes. mic coming, sir. Ah, sorry, hi. Uh, following up on the Bill Gates comment and what um, Philippe mentioned before, uh, just now, do you feel like it is a, a, a real possibility that some of the tech giants, Microsoft, Facebook, and, and the ones, will actually become, a, a, a become real players in, in sort of drug discovery, drug development? So, one thing that we as Evotech are experiencing, for example, and we are very happy about this, is that foundations, patient foundations, yeah, have learned in the last 15 years that just donating money to academia does not help their patients. So that's why many of these foundations now are actively starting drug discovery projects and work directly yeah, to go there. And that's just showing you that the spectrum of players is evolving. Yeah? And it's very clear if you look at Very Lee, that's the Google arm uh, um, for, for healthcare applications, that they are now in this testing phase, what the hell do we really want to do? Yeah? When you look at Apple and you know that 17 yeah, functions of your iWatch, which I don't have, yeah, are healthcare-related functions, yeah? there, is, there is something that they want to smell in this industry. Yeah? Today, uh, if you look at just the cash balance of Apple, they can buy every pharma company, yeah, just out of pocket money, but they are not doing it. Why are they not doing it? Because the complexity of our industry, and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a negative way, for these tech people, yeah, is just too high. Oh, it's not yeah? profitable enough. Hmm? It's not profitable enough. No, I, th I think it's for not them. a question of profitability. <laughs> profitability will come with products, but the complexity of our industry, yeah, is extremely high, and that's why they are better off yeah, first to stream and make movies, yeah, and then they will march down the healthcare route. But I think in reality they are all looking for the entry point. Yeah, they are all doing their homework. That Amazon is becoming a healthcare company mm -hmm. is clear. Amazon has started to distribute medicine. Yeah. 20 years ago, who thought that Amazon is distributing food? Yeah? Now they are distributing food. Yeah? Now they will start to distribute medicine. So also here, the convergence of these tech companies is coming. And don't think about it one way only. Yeah? I love the technology evolution of our industry. Yeah? So why should, in the long run, not our industry also be a digital provider in other industries where we are just learning from healthcare? Yeah? into these areas. I think when you, when you look at, for example, the transformation of Merck, Germany, yeah, it's fascinating yeah, that they are really going down that route quite, quite heavily. Uh, you're in the front. You uh, you, you have the, oh, sorry, she has the mic already. <laughs> You've got the mic. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Hi. I think it works. It's on. Hi, Verna. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, talk, thanks a lot. Uh, maybe a provocative uh, question or suggestion. Maybe we are thriving uh, in the wrong direction. Maybe we should rethink what innovation is. Instead for longing for uh, new molecules, new substances, maybe we should reuse uh, the old ones. We should think about sequencing mm -mm. of uh, well-established standard of care substances, thinking when, uh, um, you know, apply them, which patients, so the, the diagnostics would help us to uh, use uh, well-known, quite safe uh, substances into more precise um, directions, indications, individual patients. Maybe all the time we're just one step behind the nature is faster either if you, if you think about um, microbial infections either uh, cancer and other indications nature is faster i mean repurposing of drugs sure let's do it yeah making existing drugs with biosimilars and other modalities cheaper sure let's do it but let's not forget 
Yeah? Even if you repurpose everything, even if you try that, there are still thousands of disease out there for many either genetically uh, existing uh, situations or for other diseases where we just don't have anything. Yeah? And that's why I think we need both. Yeah? Hi, Agnes, by the way. <laughs> Another question. I don't know who got the mic. You can raise your hands. Yeah. Um, hi. So you mentioned in the beginning that uh, it's not really possible anymore to dig a hole on your own. And uh, you also mentioned Airbnb as an example of uh, the sharing economy that um, sort of is transforming a lot of uh, industries. So my question is, do you see potential for this uh, business model to some extent also in our industry? So to be precise, I'm not saying that digging a hole alone is not possible. I'm saying I don't like to dig holes alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so garden work is just not my thing. Uh, and. And this whole idea of, and here we have to always make the differentiation between naivety and business models that make sense for everyone. Yeah? So I'm a complete enemy of naivety. Yeah? Because, for example, if someone comes to me and say, come on, let's hold hand and make a consortium and share data, and everyone will get data, that's not how it works. Yeah? <laughs> uh, but what works, yeah, is to define yeah, what is what everyone needs to get out of an alliance. Yeah? And very often, yeah, I really think that this idea to share can be beneficial for both. Yeah? And it's a bit more work in the beginning of projects yeah? to think hard. Yeah? But the nice thing about our industry is that it doesn't matter to think hard at the beginning because you will work together with the people who you work with for years. Yeah? Our projects are not over and solved after three months, typically, or they are wrong and just don't work, which is also fine. Yeah? But if they should continue, then they take for a long time. That's why thinking at the beginning makes sense. And a Google-type yeah, approach to share ideas yeah, is something which clearly is coming, and that's also why uh, you said it with, with the tech companies, that's, that's their idea to come into this industry, but many other companies should try to do this as well. I've heard IKEA is just starting. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, but again, that's why no one should underestimate how high the hurdle to enter our industry is. And many naive people who just had money and tried to do healthcare have failed. Yeah, that's, that's really also something that we should not, not underestimate. No, I think we could continue for, for, for a while. Uh, but maybe a last, last question. You are the one biotech CEO I know that smiles the most. That's true, and I don't <laughs> say that often. <laughs> No, I just have a round face. That's why it looks like it. <laughs> What's your secret? On what? On smiling. Yeah, I mean... You're happy? No, I'm, I'm, I'm generally happy, yes. That's the one thing. I have a fantastic group of people who work for EvoTech who make me happy every day. Great. Please, a round of applause for Werner. <laughs> Thank you so much.